Okay, video scrubbing. Um, boy, this gets a little complicated. It does. Just but... for one simple reason. Compressed video does not scrub very well, and relatively uncompressed or lightly compressed video scrubs really well. Um, and we oh, will we show you... We have to put the QT in this one. We didn't put it in. I think that that was because you wanted to show the difference when... Mm. Um, but okay. we will be showing how to compress video in another screencast. We're just going to show this one with the assumption or uh, talk about it. Yeah. We're not going to show how to do it though. Yeah. Okay. So how to scrub. Uh, so we're going to use jit.movie as our main movie player here. Um, <clears throat> but we're not going to play the movie forward or backward. We're just going to go to specific frames. So there is a parameter that you can send to jit.movie or a message you can send to jit.movie called frame. And then you give it a number, you tell it which number frame you want to see. One is the first frame of the movie, and then you know the last frame of the movie is whatever, how, depends on how long the movie is. Right. Um, but you tell it what frame to go to, and it goes right to that frame. So uh, let's do that now. So I'm gonna load up the compressed version first. So we have this video. Let me just like set the volume to zero so this doesn't uh, add so I, th I think this would be a good moment for me to um, make that comment as you just added an argument to the end of jit.movie mm -hmm. um, a lot of the objects in Max um, can be given specific arguments that do things um, which we've shown several examples of this um, but it's important to know that an object on its own will function and do all the things it needs to do without those arguments. It's only by adding those arguments that you're telling it from the very beginning, I want you to function in this way mm -hmm. using these specific parameters or arguments, if you yeah, will. Yeah, yeah. So by putting at vol zero right into the jit.movie, it's the same as having a message that says uh, vol zero. Let me turn, basically turn the volume off. Um, except for it's, it loads in as the default value. So you don't even need a message box. You right. don't need a load bang. It's just like, it'll just load in just like that. So uh, I just wanted to turn the sound off. So I did that. And then I loaded up this uh, Yukon Striker 720. So this is the Yukon Striker roller coaster video off of YouTube. And I've recompressed it as a JPEG compressed movie um, just to show you this scrubbing demo. So I've read in that video. Uh, it automatically starts playing, but I'm gonna hit stop here. So I hit stop, and then I'm gonna go to specific frames of video. So here I'm gonna change this number that's going in, and I can scrub back and forth. So here I'm scrubbing to frame specific frame numbers. So let's see here. Whoa, there we go. And you can see you can scrub really nicely. Just it's like kind of addictive to do this, but you can scrub really beautifully. Just scrub back and forth. Now, um, the problem is, so there's a better way to even, there's an even more efficient way of doing this. Because right now, when I tell it to go to a specific frame, it doesn't even output that frame until it receives the next bang from QMetro. But what we can do, the next unit over here is, here I have frame dollar sign one comma bang. So what this comma bang does is every time you give it a new frame to go to, it says go to that frame and then immediately sends a bang message right after you tell it what number to go to. So we can get rid of this Q-Metro altogether. So we turn the Q-Metro off, and now we have an even more efficient, because it's only using the bangs it needs. You know, like if you sit there on frame 147, you don't need to keep showing frame 147, which Q-Metro would do. So in this case, it's just sending the bang message right after it tells you what frame to go to. So it's really efficient, backwards, forwards. Now I should talk a second about compression because photo JPEG compressed video, it doesn't care what direction you play the movie in. If you play an H.264 encoded video, H.264 is a really modern video encoding algorithm that YouTube uses and everybody uses now. So um, it really only wants to play forward. It's a sort of forward looking codec. It only wants to play, it's encoded only for forward playing video. When you try to play H.264 video backwards, it's just like, it's terrible. Um, and I can show you how, exactly how terrible it is. So um, let's load in the uh, H.264 version of this same movie. So, uh, and now let's say start and turn on the Metro. Now it's fine if you're just playing forward, 
uh, H.264 works fine. If you're just playing the video forward at normal speed, Max can play H.264 video no problem. It looks great. We're getting just perfectly fine frame rates here. It's fine. But if I hit stop and turn off the Q Metro and then try scrubbing with our number box here, um, it just so janky. I mean, it's so terrible. So it's all so the work. Bad. It's trying to. T it's trying desperately to keep up with these numbers. But it just can't stand it. There's it, no it, real it time it. kind of movement I mean, it's, forward. It's completely unusable. Like you cannot scrub the video like this at all, um, because H.264 video is made up of of uh, P frames and B frames and all these weird components that only really want to play forward, and they're really only intended for playing forward even at normal speed. Um, you, it doesn't even like to play H.264 at different speeds. Now watch if you open up the the Photo JPEG version again. Oh, it's just. It's really nice and smooth, except what some, I think I just broke something. What's going on? Um, uh oh. Weird. Maybe we still have the old video open. Stop it. Stop. Um. Green. Start. Okay, so this is, yeah, this is the H, sorry, this is the photo JPEG compressed movie. We'll hit stop, and now we should be able to scrub really nicely. Beautiful scrubbing. Beautiful scrubbing, but Beautiful. what if I want to know how many frames are in that video? Oh yeah, a lot of times you have to know how many frames. So um, we can say get frame count. There's a message that JIT.movie understands called get frame count, and it will just spit out the right outlet from the JIT.movie player this message frame count and then the the frame and the number of frames in the video. So here I'm routing. Uh, whenever it says frame count, it's going to tell me what number follows that frame count message. So this is a way, we could just send this to print, the print object, and look in our console, and that'd be just fine. But this is a way of routing different messages from JIT.movie or any object that'll do this. So when, when JIT.movie outputs the frame count, this is going to route that frame count to this number box so we can easily see how many frames are in the movie without going to the print window. So here I say get frame count. There's 1,719 frames of video in this uh, photo JPEG compressed one. I think there's a lot more in this other yeah, one. So let's say this one and do frame count here. Yeah, now there's 8,233 mm -hmm. video. Uh, now there's a reason why we chose a lot fewer frames of video in the photo JPEG compressed one is the photo JPEG is a really old, it's a really old fashioned uh, compression format. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's using JPEG compression on every individual consecutive frame of video uh, so every video frame is is compressed on its own in the same way that you would compress a photograph uh, to put on the internet. So it's a really simple codec. It makes for a huge file size. Yeah. That was a really big file size. But the advantage is, even though it's a bigger file size, you get a lot faster playback. We're going to talk more about that later. Though. All right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Bye.